Are you looking to make sure your resources in Azure are as close together as possible? Let's find out how with Proximity Placement Groups. No man is an island, and typically no virtual machine is an island either. They work with other virtual machines. And often we might have a requirement to try and place certain resources as close together as possible. We want the lowest possible latency. Now, if we take a step back, if I think about Azure, ordinarily we think about, well, we have this great big service that's global and we have regions. So for example, we could just say, hey, this is East US. Now that region by definition has this kind of two millisecond latency envelope. So whatever's in that region, there's a two millisecond maximum latency. That could be pretty big distance. Now a region is actually made up of multiple data centers. So I could think about, well, there's multiple data centers within this particular region. I'm just gonna draw two for now. And they do get exposed to us in many regions as availability zones. So I might have kind of AZ1 and AZ2 and then AZ3 in my subscription. Now that's logical. A different subscription, my AZ1 would map to maybe AZ3 in a different subscription. But the goal of availability zones is blast radius. It's about resiliency. Each availability zone has independent cooling and power and communications. So from a blast radius perspective, hey, if I distribute my resources over the three availability zones that are exposed to me in a region, I can survive a data center going down and two thirds of my workload would still be running. Now an AZ, we often think about an AZ is a data center. That's not strictly true. An AZ actually could be multiple data centers. That's not really exposed to us. But an AZ is all about blast radius, it's about resiliency. Now proximity is a side effect. I think about, hey, if I put resources in the same availability zone, they're pretty close together. And yes, there's a, an element of truth to that, but it's really a side effect. That's not the goal of an availability zone. Availability zone is about resiliency. It's that blast radius, but it so happens, yes, my resources will be within a certain closeness, but there's no exact defined consistent proximity about that. Now within a data center, what actually happens is we can think about there's rows of racks of servers and there's lots of these and we have clusters. So a cluster are rows of servers that are managed by a common fabric controller. Now that's exposed to us as availability sets. So I might have multiple rows of racks managed by a common fabric controller. And when I use availability sets, so let's say I have an availability set, what's actually exposed to me is three fault domains, typically three. Now, each of those fault domains is a particular rack within the cluster. So if I see three fault domains, I'm using three different racks that my workloads are distributed over. Once again, this is about resiliency. The goal of an availability set is about me saying, hey, look, I can withstand the failure of a node or rack because my workloads are distributed on other racks other racks within that cluster. And once again, as a side effect, I could say, well, if I put my workloads in the same availability set, then I know there's a certain proximity. But the definition of a cluster is really expanding as a single fabric controller can now manage more and more resources. So once again, it's about resiliency. Once again, there's a side effect of proximity, but it's not consistent, it's not guaranteed as the definition of what is a cluster evolves, that's gonna vary how close my resources will actually be. And another problem is, typically within a cluster, 
it's one primary type of server. So I support a certain set of virtual machine types. Whereas if I need a combination of N series and LS series and D and G whatever, probably not gonna get that in one availability set. Plus, I want a more consistent proximity idea. So availability zones, availability sets, both about resiliency, both have some side effect of proximity, but it, it, it's not guaranteed, it's not consistent. And so the goal of a proximity placement group is about proximity. It's about ensuring a very low latency and a consistent low latency. And when I think about what is latency, latency is really about distance. We have the speed of light or speed of data, light over fiber. And so a proximity placement group is about getting them within a certain boundary. And we're talking about not just sub millisecond. Um, in my testing, where you combine it with accelerated networking as well, we're talking a couple of hundred microseconds. It's like a fifth of a millisecond. Now, the way I use a proximity placement group is I create a proximity placement group. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna create a proximity placement group one. Now at this time, it doesn't exist anywhere. It's not pinned anywhere. The first resource that I create in the proximity placement group will pin it to a certain boundary. Maybe a certain, we can think about it, it's not strictly true. Think about it like maybe a certain data center. I can use this in combination with availability sets and availability zones. So let's say, for example, well, the first virtual machine I create, I'm gonna put it into proximity placement group one and put it in AZ2. This proximity placement group will therefore be pinned now as part of AZ2. This is my proximity placement group location now. So anything else I put in, so that was my first VM I created. So I created my kind of VM number one. So where I place the first resource in a proximity placement group is where it essentially gets instantiated and pinned to. Anything else I add now will get pinned to that place. So I can actually do the same kind of call now. I could actually add an availability set to my proximity placement group, which I now know will be in AZ2. Normally you can't do that. I can't normally mix availability zones and availability sets. I pick one or the other. Well now, because I created my proximity placement group in AZ2, I could now go and add an availability set in that proximity placement group, which means that availability set is being put in AZ2 as well. It's kind of a, a neat little side effect. But now all of the resources I add into that proximity placement group will be within that certain proximity envelope. So you're gonna have that super low latency. Now, one of the great things about this is because it's not just an availability set, there can be mixes of clusters providing the resources. I could mix in an N series and an M series and a D series and an E, etc., providing, hey, those are available within that particular boundary, that particular potentially data center. Which actually brings us to a few points. The first resource I create is what pins the proximity placement group. So when I'm creating a proximity placement group, use the most exotic VM first. So if I'm gonna create an N series or an LS series or an M series, create the most exotic VM first, because then that's gonna make sure I'm pinned to a location that supports that exotic VM. Use ARM templates. Use an ARM template with all of the different VMs I wanna create, and then that will actually be used to help pick, hey, I'm gonna put this in the right place. So those are some of the kind of key things around its use. Again, proximity placement group is about proximity. The name kind of gives it away, but it's focused on that. It's not focused on resiliency. It's about making sure I have a low and consistent 
proximity for the resources I place in it. But I can use it in combination with availability zones and availability sets. And just remember, it will get pinned to the first resources location that I put in that proximity placement group. So if the first thing I put in is in AZ1, that's where the proximity placement group will be pinned to. If I create just a generic D series virtual machine first, well, it may be put in a location that later on doesn't support an N or an M or a G. So put the most exotic, the biggest VM first to make sure we're pinned to a certain location. But again, do your testing. Make sure you use accelerated networking as well. Accelerated networking bypasses the virtual switch. And instead, it's actually using the hardware to help go and map um, sort of the routing of the packet. So I get better performance, less latency. So combination of proximity placement groups and that accelerated networking is going to give me that very low, very consistent latency. Hope this was useful. Go check out proximity placement groups.